Hi guys, thanks for listening to Northern Transmissions. This edition features Admiral Radley. Um, I got to sit down and talk to the guys before their show at the Media Club in Vancouver, BC. So here it is, and I hope you enjoy. Here's the first single, I Heart California, off the album I Heart California. On a, do a, do a, for a. I am California, yeah. Some of the questions um, we talked about is how the guys um, that formed Admiral Radley, the pre their previous bands were, I shouldn't say previous, since both bands um, 
actually, I apologize. Early Mart is still around, and Jason Little has gone solo from Granddaddy. But we just talked about how the band came together and what the songwriting process is. Well, I don't, I, you know, this is like a, a new thing for us, so it's, I think, for me personally, Aaron, um, I, uh, but there was a time frame where we needed to come up with the tunes, you know, and, and and it's not like I had like a big back catalog of songs or something that I just said, oh, I'll just grab these. So I, it was just timing timing stuff. I didn't think like, oh, I wrote this song, maybe it should be an early March song or, or whatever. So <clears throat> whatever I wrote at the time just was going to be an Admiral Radley song, um, and that's that. And here's Jason sanding off on how the bands joined together. Yeah, you know, I, I really have to try to remember because it's it was pretty much you know the whole thing was you know let's get together let's because uh, Aaron's studio is pretty comfortable you know there's a lot of elbow room and the idea literally was to get you know a few of us granddaddy members and. And Aaron and Ariana and you know other people who have been in and out of Early Mart over the years together and just uh, and just start messing around with stuff you know there was it, I don't know it's weird it was just like hang out and start working on stuff and it, it obviously helped if if there was already some some ideas formed and there were some songs that were going and it was pretty much you know, free game, you know, like, yeah, you know, and that's, that's always kind of fun sometimes, it's, it takes you out of your, uh, I mean, for me, I, I'm, I'm a little self-conscious about verbalizing my ideas, you know, and, it, you know, and to think that you have an idea, and to think that it might be a good idea, but to think that other people might not think it's a good idea, and to, like, put it out, you know, in the world for fear of you know getting shot down or laughed at or whatever it can be kind of a scary thing but uh um i think we're all good enough friends to where you know it wasn't you couldn't really get shot down it was just like yeah oh you know what that is a good idea but then and how about this you know expand expounding upon ideas and it kind of I think once everybody got comfortable with what we were doing like you know which was basically a bunch of friends hanging out and uh, working on each other's songs all in the name of having them turn into our own songs collectively uh, once we got comfortable with that whole concept then it was like I don't know there was nothing to do but just you know, drink beer and laugh and listen to the speakers and, you know, break out whatever instruments the songs required. You're listening to Northern Transmissions, and I'm chatting with Jason and Aaron from Admiral Radley. And next we chatted about growing up in Fresno and Modesto, California. I mean, if anything, I was, in, I was inspired by the fact that I didn't grow up with... There wasn't a lot of bands to watch, and I actually, I, I, I remember just, I was, I would just, if anything, I was imagining this type of music that existed out there, you know. Maybe if I was seeing too many bands and I was like, you know, subjected to too many all-ages shows, I would have been a little bit too preoccupied with trying to sound like people, but I kind of had this, I kind of had a sound in my head, and it was based on... You know, listening to the radio and then imagining what bands sounded like out there and then somehow trying to come up with my own version of it. That was sort of my thing. Um, but uh, I think Fresno and Modesto are pretty pretty similar, although Fresno is like the big, big city, <laughs> the big city in the valley. <clears throat> um, when I was growing up, we, we had a few, probably had like, maybe we had two more bands than Modesto did, but... Uh, there was this band called the Miss Allens in Fresno. I don't know. Did you ever hear of the Miss Allens? Well, the Miss Allens in the late 80s and the early 90s were like this band from Fresno that uh, got out or whatever. They moved to L.A. They got signed and all that. And um, 
the well, it's probably like yeah, more like late '80s. And that's when like college radio was like really happening, and and they um they got to do some shit with like REM and stuff like opening like opener 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 stuff. And for me, it was just like, oh my god, if I could be like the Miss Allens, like the Miss Allens are like the biggest thing I'd ever you know known. And um, that was kind of a big inspiration. I don't know musically. Not necessarily, but I just think like in terms of dreams, being a dreamer, because it's hard to be a dreamer in the Central Valley. I think yeah. you know. Should, should get some pavement too. Pavement. Yeah. The pavement oh. was pavement was right down the street. They were like they were 30 minutes away, and the same plight, the same pit, you know, the same. Were pavement from that? They, they were from, from uh, like Stockton. They were like from Stockton. Yeah. Their story was a little bit different. You know, they had like I think a few of the guys like Malcolmus and like for the, their parents had money and they kind of went off to college so they were they were their their horizons were broadened you know but they still claimed Stockton as a as as their hometown and isn't isn't for, I mean from what I've read but isn't Stockton like it's a pretty rough that's why I was always myth about that because uh, Malcolmus is a pretty refined dude right and, and, and Stockton seems a little edgy if I'm not mistaken yeah I mean there, there was definitely they benefited from claiming the stock, the Stockton thing because it was, cause it was it, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty obscure you know listening to their music and kind of you know and it has a you know kind of heavily art tinged and then to say you're from Stockton just kind of it almost warps it just perfectly you know so they I think that they uh, they definitely benefited from that claim.
And that was Admiral Radley with Ghosts of Syllables off their I Heart California album. And next we talked about um, playing in front of different size, sizes of crowds and a little bit about Christopher Cross. Jason's probably played a lot more bigger places than, than uh, Early Mart has, but um, I mean, yeah, of course it always feels good to be in this like bigger sort of venue and, and uh, if it's sold out or something, there's always like that built-in electricity, I guess. But as far as I'm concerned, I mean, this is like um, <laughs> Ariana's cheating. <laughs> Ariana should start asking the questions now. She'd interview this. Um, why? <laughs> I, I think that, uh, you know, in, in, in this scenario, the, the ad rad scenario, you know, the, the places are pretty modest. We're, we're a modest band. We're, we're a new band. Although, you know, yes, we've probably gotten to do a few things. Some, some perks have come our way because been, we've gotten more opportunities maybe being a new band than most new bands, you know, because we're also old men and we've, like, earned it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I like the idea that we're, it's a pretty modest thing. It's humble and the places that we're doing on this tour are, are the same way and the people that come, they, you know, they're only here because they really want to be here. You know, it's not like, you know, date night out on the town, you know, what's going on? Let's look in the paper, honey. <laughs> we know. It's like people that come to the show, <laughs> they really care. And uh, that means the most in the world, I think, you know. Cool. I, um, I read something that... Uh Obviously, it's a bit, of, a bit of a joke, but you were saying that you were uh, compared yourself to a cross between. Sorry, <laughs> pardon Yeah, I know where this is going. Christopher Cross uh, between Al, Al uh, no, Yank Yankovic. Cross, uh, is, is there any truth to this rumor? Number one, just to lighten it, and were you aware there's uh, an Arthur remake down the pipe? <laughs> the movie? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Who's gonna play him? Ah, uh, who's gonna play Dudley Moore? Um, I think you don't be a great one. I just think maybe Russell Brand. You think would be a good guy, or is he too like? Uh, he's the new British drunk guy. <laughs> yeah, right. totally. Anyway, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Right. <laughs> And, folks, by no means had I any idea that Russell Brand was going to play Arthur. So just, just to let you know, pretty freaky, eh? But, uh, but the honest truth. Um, yeah, and also that was the lovely Ariana singing a bit of the Christopher Cross ballad, Arthur. So uh, who knows? Maybe Admiral Radley will do the soundtrack for the remake of Arthur. Continuing uh, my conversation with Admiral Radley, we talked about critics taking the band a little too seriously and how fans of previous bands, Granddaddy and Early Mart, have reacted to the new material. We've had a, we've had a few messages from people where I'm like, yeah, I, I, I feel like they are missing the point. And it's, you can't, and sometimes, you know, you get wrapped up in your own little vacuum and you just expect that everybody knows, you know, the things about you that you know. And you're like, well, naturally, you know, we're doing this and it's going to have this feel to it because, you know, we do all this other stuff that we're super serious about. Or So there was definitely, I mean, that had a big appeal to it. It was, uh, you know, that we could kind of cut loose. Well, the, for me personally, I was, you know, I was, yeah, you know, this is a great opportunity to, you know, not do stuff that I thought was throwaway, you know, material for my own music, but just, you know, stuff that was, I was a little bit, you know, stretching, you know, as much as I can, or just, you know, things that were. I don't know, there was definitely a bit of that, but I think that it, both Aaron and I, and Ariana as well, I mean, we're, we're, we're really, when it really came down to calling it a record, I think one thing that we all always fall back on is like the idea of an album, you know, the idea of a, 
front to back and some kind of balance. So it was great to experiment and go in all these different directions, but we did want to have some sort of cohesion, even even you know with bouncing all over the place, be able to call it a package, you know, at some point. Yeah, I mean, because I think uh, I don't know. I actually don't read any of this stuff, so but I know I pro I understand where you're coming from, where people might say, "Oh, what is this fucked on beer shit?" and blah blah blah, but. Yes, there's obviously a fun element to the record. We did, we wrote songs like that because they would be fun to record as well, like as a group, you know, we would do things like that. But there's like, there's some like, you know, there's some straight up serious, heartfelt moments on, on the record as well, you know. It's, so I think it's a blend of all of that. I think, yeah, if they focus on, it's not like 12 I'm fucked up on beer songs back to back to back to back, you know. Um, I don't know. People probably, maybe because of the our past work or whatever, think that it's going to be like, oh, it has to be all doom and gloom all the fucking time. And it's it's not. It's not. It doesn't have to be. I, I, I still have a... I'm still, like, mystified just by a lot of humans, like, lack of sense of humor to begin with, you know? Even, you know, my neighbors are just like, you know, or people that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis at home it's like it's like humor humor it's good it's healthy it, you know why wouldn't it like find its way into uh, uh, you know into everything into funerals into into uh, you know standing at the standing in line at the post office it's all funny shit everywhere <laughs> I'm on your page with that for sure um so how have the, uh, the early art and granddaddy fans, I just said camps here, but it's more like fans, reacted to the, what's been the, what's been the feedback so far for Admiral Radley? I think we're, right now we're pretty reliant on those people <laughs> entirely. <laughs> so. That's good, that's really good. They've, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I think uh, yeah, we're definitely lucky to have established as many fans doing <clears throat> our own things respectively. Because uh, I think right now they're pretty much they're pretty much footing the bill. <laughs>
and that was Red Curbs from Admiral Radley. Next, we talked about being on the road and seeing so many different landscapes and interesting places, as well as uh, if we can expect any new material from Early Mart or Jason, Jason Little. Any places that have made you just want to say, uh, I quit, not saying? <laughs> Focus on the positive, huh? <laughs> I mean it is, uh, yeah, I mean it's totally in a positive way. Oh, I see, I thought you meant, I thought you meant, I quit, I'm getting on a plane, it's yeah, over. Sorry, I mean, you know, like, <laughs> places, you know. Ah, right, right, right. Besides our own hometowns. Um. I, I already had that moment. I, 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 uh. I got done with touring and I got done with Granddaddy and I actually made that move. I, I moved to Montana, which was like, that was the big move for me. And I pretty much, you know, cured my need for solitude and scenery and uh, just, you know, a, a healthier way of life. So that's actually nice for me to go back into all these grimy areas and, and knowing that I'm just dipping in and I can, and I'll be able to dip out again, <clears throat> back to some some civility at some point. Any early martyr Jason, uh, solo Jason stuff on the horizon? Uh, well, I think that <clears throat> we both are early Mart and Jason are, uh, I know that we're both working on stuff in, in between the gaps. Like this is kind of, we've been dubbing it the Adrad summer vacation. And so, um, but we've kind of figured it out so that there's, you know, we were, we're on for two weeks and off for two weeks and on for two weeks. And I think in those gaps, we're, we're, we're working on stuff. Um, so it's like a little race, like, who can get it done first? Yeah, at this point, we're both actually looking forward to doing our own stuff. Just, and I, <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Now that this whole, this whole Admiral Radley thing really kind of, like, it really started... It started sweeping itself up, and it started kind of becoming its own thing. I think it was and it's a surprise to, to all of us. So we're just kind of rolling with the momentum that it has right now. Because I had, I had actually planned on being home all this year, doing nothing but, like, working on my own stuff. So I was like, really? I was like, yeah, we got this opportunity to go here, there, there with the, with, with the ad rad stuff. And I was like, all right. You know, so I'm kind of putting my putting the project that I had started on hold for the time being just to see what we can make of this thing. Okay, and one final question for you. Um. Thank you guys for listening to this edition of Northern Transmissions with Admiral Radley. And thank you as always to my cohort, my friend Andy Kalstrom, producer extraordinaire. And we're going to leave you with one more track. I left you because I left you. And before that, I had one last question about Mr. Admiral Radley. Thanks again. See you guys. Is the Admiral on the guest list for every show? <laughs> yes, the son of a bitch won't show up. <laughs> Keep trying. You because you got to get him out to you got to get him out to a show, right? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm becoming eventually slowly suspicious that he just doesn't like the music. He doesn't, he doesn't like the way we sound. <laughs> <laughs> I can handle that too, you know. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know. The, you can't expect, you know, the, all the members of Slayer's parents to sit around listening <laughs> to Slayer. You know. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs>